Welcome back to my channel. It's your favorite girl Imani Bailey and I'm here back with another video. Yay! So if you are not part of the Money Mob family or you are not subscribed to me, go ahead and click the subscribe button and go ahead and join the family. I won't bother you. It's completely free. But if you want notifications on when I upload, please don't forget to press the bell somewhere down below. You know, because I will... I will never know what corner the bell is at. It's either at this one or this one. I'm gonna go right into it because there, there's a lot of steps into applying for college. It is actually a very stressful process. And although you can transfer out at any time, like I have, um, I would say you wanna kinda do it right the first time and pick a place that's for you the first time. But at the end of the day, it's like you, you won't never know if the place is really for you until you actually are there because people can sell you a dream, okay? <laughs> All right, um, so the first step in applying for college, I want to say step one is to do your research, um, figure out where exactly you want to go and what you want to go to college for. Now, you can always go in and be undecided. You can pick an undecided major or you can do like your core classes and then you can pick, you know, to do your major after that. So it's like you have like a little bit of a year after you start college and to, um, you know, a year to maybe two years, depending on what your major is going to be. So you could do that, but um, I would recommend recommend doing a little soul searching and figure out what you want to major in before you even start this process. Before you even pick a school, figure out what you want to major in because your major can determine what, what college you end up going for. Um, so keep that in mind. A lot of people, they don't think about that. They just think about the school and then they pick a major. No, pick your major and then pick the school. So please do your research. If you are wanting to apply and be a business major like I am, don't go to a school that has a horrible business business program but has a good teaching program. Like, just, just don't do that. So that's why I always say, learn your major, do, pick your major, and then pick the school. Um, um, you are going to, y'all, this is very important. If you don't take something away from this video, take this. You're going to take your SAT and your ACT and or your ACT. I want to say like, do it like three, four, actually, if you could do it like six months in advance. Um, the earlier you do your SAT or ACT, the better because you might take it once well, not even six months in advance. I mean, you could take it up, take it your junior year and then take it your senior year. I mean, take it super early. I took, I did mine super early. I took the SAT twice and then I took the ACT once. So the first time you take the SAT, you might not do as well as you would have hoped to. So that's why I say take it so far in advance to where you get your scores back and you say, ooh, I did horrible in this. I can um, study, I can get test prep, and then I can wait a few months and I can do it again. So just, yeah, the earlier the better. Not six months, I'm tripping. Like a year in advance. <laughs> um, my recommendation, like the best thing that worked out for me, honestly, was the ACT. The ACT I found was a lot easier when I do speak to people. The SAT is very, the SAT is not a test that you're used to. And that's why most people, when they take it, they have to take it twice because it's something that you're not going to be used to unless you are enrolled in like a program for thousands of dollars for SAT prep. Um, but other than that, yeah, I would personally pick the ACT because it's a lot easier. Um, the way the ACT is set up, it's kind of like a final exam, something that you're used to. Literally, it's like a final exam of high school, just a big final exam that's like four hours long. However, when you answer your questions, you only get graded for the questions you get right. So it's, it's like the complete opposite. You don't get docked for the ones you get wrong, but you get you get points for the ones you get right. The SAT, all over the place, okay? <laughs> I'm not even about to explain SAT because it's been so long since I took it. Um, yeah, so your SAT scores and your ACT scores, sadly enough, are actually very important. And it's America's way of just making money, to be honest. But that's a whole nother video for a whole nother time. But yeah, your, your SAT and your ACT are very, very, very important to where you want to attend school. Now, the number one important thing of finessing the American way of life is actually networking. And let me tell you this. 
I got into um, Howard University by and I did not end up going there for various reasons but I got into Howard University and the only reason why I got to, I got into Howard University before I even retook my SAT and ACT I got to my Howard University because I met someone who could get me in so literally networking is the number one way to finesse in American culture all jokes aside with college with work with everything networking and knowing people can get you in some places you probably don't even have the SAT scores but because you know somebody that work at Harvard or who, who works somewhere they could probably get you in you never know like just be on your P's and Q's okay and that's very important as well but if you don't know someone at the school that you're applying for your scores are very important and um, it's a money-making tactic and it's a weed out tactic so Yes. That's the third thing. Um, the fourth thing I guess would be the networking. Please network. Um, go to your high school college fair. Um, talk to college recruiters. Like I mean these college recruiters are here to help you and um, if you are a minority this is like I, I keep telling people college is a big finesse. You have to learn early. <laughs> okay, these are Imani's finesse ways that I'm letting y'all know. You have to learn early. If you are a minority and you want to go to a prominently white school, you're already at an advantage because affirmative action kicks in. And if you don't know what affirmative action is and you're applying to college, stop this video and go look up affirmative action because it will be your best friend to get into anything you want to do. Um, with being a minority now also on the flip side if you are a Caucasian person and you want to go to HBCU because you are that minority you might get scholarships as well you know to go in there you know a lot of white people don't want to go to HBCUs but you know not everybody's the same if it's inside of a box however for my black people uh, my Hispanic people my Asian people my Pacific Pacific Islander people, my Native Americans. Honey, if you are watching this video and you are a Native American, child, you got a lot of scholarships. You have free money. You have a whole bunch of stuff going on with these colleges that will give you anything because you are Native American. Okay? Okay. Um, tip number five. Once you find that college that you know you want to go to, I would say pick about four, four colleges, um, four colleges or universities, and pick where you want to go. Don't, you don't want to do way too. You don't want to do more than four because that just it starts to be a bit much. But I would say pick four top ones that you want to go to, and out of those four top ones, you can go tour those four top ones. So. Always, I say always, 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 um, number five. These are in no order, but go on a college tour. That college tour will give you a feel of the campus. Yes, they they could be selling you a dream, but at the end of the day, it, it gives you a feel of the campus. Like you wanna you wanna feel you know walking through the quad. You wanna feel you know how is the student center looking? How is the library looking? How is the make of the college or the university looking? Because at the end of the day, America, you know, it's all about money. You're gonna forfeit out thousands of dollars for this degree. So if you go to a university and you forfeit out thousands of dollars and it looks ran down, do you want to go there? I mean, some people do, but that the type of person I am, no. <laughs> Those college tours, um, take a parent with you. Take your mom, take your dad, or take a guardian, um, your aunt, your uncle, your grandmother, you know, don't just go with your friends and think about, you know, partying and stuff like that. Because at the end of the day, College education is very, very, very expensive, and you can party and not be in school. I, like, I really don't get why people are in college and they party and they fail when they could have been partying for free and not wasting money. So please go with the parent because parents ask those questions that you might not have thought about. They do, they always do. My mom, she's inevitable. Like she always asks questions that I didn't even think about. Um, the cost, at the end of the day, um, the cost is always going to be a factor um, no matter if you have you know academic scholarship athletic scholarship whatever whatever so forth you got to get it how you 
get it how you live, the cost is always a factor. So please make sure, you know, you're not going in debt um, or more debt or unnecessary debt. Okay, because a lot of people are already taking out loans and stuff to go to college and a lot of people are already in debt. <coughs> a lot of people are already in debt, but you want to make sure, you know, is your return on investment good? Okay, write this down. Return on investment. Is my return on investment good? And when you go on these college campus tours, you can ask them, what's the return on investment at this college campus? How many, you know, what's the percentage of graduates? You know, what fields, you know, are they employed? What are they doing? What are the graduates doing? I need some numbers. I'm a numbers person. I need some numbers to back this up. You know, I need to know what's my return on investment. And as well as when you look up your college, Search it up. Search the databases. Um, search the economic. What is it? You want to search the um, the college, the nation, the national ranking of the college. Of course, you want to search the return on investment um, for the college. You know, if your if your tuition is costing you sixty thousand dollars a year, but your return on investment is actually pretty good, as well as oh, okay, well once you graduate from our college, you could be making six figures like 90% of our people making six figures so well not 90 but you know like you know 60% of the people who graduate with this major from our college are already making this much money so it's like you know you can you can outweigh the cost and the benefit that way cost important very important number seven y'all are y'all ready this is when you start getting closer um even before you've the test scores you can fill out the fafsa very 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 early um get on that as soon as possible the fafsa is at fsa.gov um it basically is everything so it gives you your your um student loans your student grants like pell grant and your hope scholarship if you live in the state of georgia now i can only speak for the state of georgia because i'm not sure what other states have being that I am from Atlanta, but if you are watching this and you are from Atlanta, we have a wonderful thing that you need to take advantage of, um, which is why a lot of people from Georgia end up going to school in Georgia because it's such a good deal. Like, <laughs> Mr. Zell Miller done did himself proud, honey, okay? So the Hope Scholarship, for quick, quick fact for people in Georgia or you moving to Georgia, the Hope Scholarship is a basically funded by the georgia lottery so anyone who buys lottery tickets it goes into the fund of the whole scholarship now the stipulations on how to get the whole scholarship i'm just going to talk about you know for my graduating class i graduated high school in 2015 however every year it does change so don't quote me please speak to your counselor if you are watching this and you are interested in the hope scholarship also visit the hope scholarship website i will have that link down below as well and you can see for your graduation year what your requirements are but for my graduation year 2015 all you had to do was have a 3.0 in high school and you got the hope scholarship you kept the 3.0 and the hope scholarship covered depending on what school you picked in the state of georgia a percentage of your tuition so with georgia state i believe it was almost it was like 80 percent of my tuition yeah it was 80 percent of my tuition was covered because i kept the 3.0 in high school and to maintain the hope scholarship in college you just have to keep a 3.0 um hope gpa so yes if you want more information on that look into that please I'll make sure i got no lipstick on my teeth so yes you had a 3.0 in high school got a 3.0 in college you get 80 percent of your tuition already paid for hope scholarship actually has a different side that's hope scholarship part a hope scholarship part b goes into zell miller when i was in high school you had a 3.7 and you scored a 20 four or 25 on the act and you had 100 percent of your tuition covered um in your housing and i think you get a book stipend as well so yeah zell miller is like the upper echelon of hope scholarship it's okay if you can't have a 3.7 and get zell and get you know your tuition your housing and everything paid for hope scholarship on its own paying 80 percent of my tuition is actually that's a that is a bang for your buck so yes if you do not live in georgia please look at your states you know law, like see what your state has to offer because different states might have different things that are like that so check into that 
because free money is free money okay and that's come from the government <laughs> So that is through FAFSA. A different thing that I said through FAFSA are your grants, like the Pell Grant. That goes by income. It is income-based. It is need-based. Need I'm going to put the quotes around because the government decides if you're needy enough. I.e. it screws over the middle class. Honestly, the best people to go to college are like the super rich ones or the super poor ones because it, it always screws over the middle class. So if they feel like you need the money, you get a Pell Grant, which is up to like $6,000 a year. So if you qualify for that, you want to make sure you fill out your FAFSA correctly and see if you can get that free money. Again, free money. You never pay it back. The other thing that comes to your FAFSA are student loans. Now, a lot of students take out loans. There are two types of loans. There are subsidized loans and there are unsubsidized loans. Subsid let's make sure. Subsidized, lo subsidized loans are loans that do not, um, I want to make sure I'm saying this, incur. Is it incur? Occur? Accrue? Accrue. Look, I'm not an accounting major. <laughs> Um, they are loans, subsidized loans are loans that do not accrue interest while you are in school. So, example, I take out a, a subsidized loan for $5,000. My interest rate is, I don't know, 28%. While I'm in school, I do not get interest on that $5,000. It's still $5,000. Now, you can start paying off your loans at any time. As soon as you take out a loan, start paying on it. it don't, you don't have to pay ridiculous amounts. You can, pay, you can pay $10 a week. You can pay $200 a week. You can pay $100 a month. Your loans do not accrue interest while you're in school when you have a subsidized loan. Okay? And when you graduate from school, it does not accrue interest until six months after you graduate. Now, there's a second part of these student loans, which are the unsubsidized loans. The unsubsidized loans are extra loans that after the government feels like we are giving you too much subsidized loans, you can always take an unsubsidized loan, which are loans that accrue interest while you are in school as soon as you take them out. So if it has a 30% interest rate and you take out $5,000, as soon as the next month hit, it's the $5,000 is going to go up because you're already accruing interest because it's an unsubsidized loan. Okay? Whichever. You can still pay those back whenever you take them out. You can pay on them monthly. You can set up an automatic payment. If you are living at home with your parents, you can pay on it as if you're paying on rent. I've known someone to do this and by the time they got out of school, they had no um <laughs> they had no loans you're gonna be like santa claus you're gonna check the list you're gonna check the list twice y'all because there are certain things you might need for certain schools now you might need two essays for this school and one optional essay if you have anything lagging if you feel like you are not as strong as most of the candidates who are applying for that university go ahead and do the optional essay y'all do the optional essay and it's okay you can tell them like this essay these school honestly school is a big finesse I, I be telling y'all school is a finesse so please make sure you all what was I saying fill out the optional essay um if like if you're applying to the school and you don't feel like you have a strong GPA you can explain that in your essay because I mean although numbers do mean stuff I'm telling there's always a loophole. You can get in, you can explain, hey, I had took care of most of the children or whatever, or I was really struggling in the class, I did my best, this is why my GPA was like this, or I was depressed. Like it might sound like an excuse or whatever, but sometimes people who review your essays, you never know who's gonna look at it. They could have been going through the same thing or have the same hiccup you did. And at the end of the day, we are all human. So you never know. Fill out the optional essay if you feel like you're not a strong candidate. Okay. Um, your recommendations. Please make sure when you are getting recommendations for college, I know a lot of videos don't talk about this, but you're going to want to fill out a brag sheet. You're going to make a brag sheet for yourself. So whoever, if I go to a teacher of mine, or professor, well, a teacher of mine when I was in high school, and I say, hey, um, Miss So-and-so, can you do a recommendation for me to go in this college? You want to ask your teacher like a month in advance, two months in advance. Okay, like, I'll, 
I was saying a month in advance. I'm just a super early cat, okay? But a month in advance or at least three weeks in advance on when you need that recommendation because people are busy and when you're asking favors for free, you know, you got to keep in mind people have lives. You're going to make a brag sheet and the brag sheet is basically going to brag about yourself. Like, I have this many volunteer hours for here, here, and here. In my spare time, I do this. I sing at the church. I enjoy cleaning up the park. I take in classes like this, this, and this. Um, you know, I am an AP student. You want to kind of brag about yourself. And it can be with extracurricular activities that you do. I'm the captain of um, I don't, I'm the captain of the cheerleading team. I'm part of the art club. You know, make a brag sheet about yourself. The more stuff that you put on there, the easier it is for the person who is writing your letter. Okay? And you make a brag sheet and just save that brag sheet because you're going to need it again. You might need it again in college. You never know. You might need it for scholarships. Scholarships ask for recommendations sometimes too. So just save it. Give it out to everyone who's doing your recommendations. It makes it so easy for them so they won't have to sit and think, well, what did she do? I can't remember. Bye, loves. And always forget, always forget, wow, always don't, for, don't forget to stay true to yourselves.